Thank you. Uh, I'm Michael. I'm a senior software engineer at Jamf. I've been on the Jamf Nation team for four years, but I've been at Jamf for five. Um, I'm actually giving a longer version of this presentation uh, in Auckland uh, on Monday, so thank you for letting me practice a portion <laughs> of it right now. Uh, as Aaron mentioned earlier, we uh, have silly nicknames for all of our scrum teams at Jamf. Uh, ours happens to be Thunderdome, uh, which is uh, all those movies, all those Mad Max movies were filmed in Australia, so I didn't try to do that, but that's just, it's been like this for about two years. Um, where does our, our nickname come from? Uh, most teams at Jamf use a process called Scrum. Uh, we use uh, a process called Kanban. Um, I won't get into the details of it, but Kanban has a lot fewer rules than uh, Scrum, so uh, that's where Thunderdome comes in. There's one rule. So, <laughs> yeah. So with Kanban, uh, it's a lot more flexible. Uh, we, we get input from everybody uh, at Jamf, including you guys as customers. So we ha have to be able to react to changes in priority, um, uh, whereas Scrum didn't allow us to do that. So um, that's why we switched to Kanban. Uh, this is our team. Uh, we're a small team. Uh, we have a manager who's out in Williamsburg, Virginia. Uh, and we have a product owner in Minneapolis, six engineers, also in Minneapolis, one of which is our automation engineer. He only writes automation code. And then two interns and our sysadmin, Jacek, who's in, in Poland. Uh, there's a story with that bear. You can ask me later. Uh, Jamf Nation isn't just a forum. It's not just discussions, feature requests, articles. There's a lot more that goes on in the background that people may not realize. A um, lot of integrations with Jamf Pro. Uh, most of it is uh, a metric summary, APNS, uh, push proxy as well. Uh, the biggest thing uh, that isn't related to Jamf Pro that's not a discussion is our renewals in our store. If you want to buy a, or register for a class, that's, that's done on Jamf Nation. Um, renewals done on Jamf Nation. Same with the beta program, that's another one. Uh, so I'll go over some statistics. We have 47,000 members right now. Uh, it's tough to determine how many of these are, are really active, but we've got about a 20% rate of people logging in in the last month, which is about 9,000. So um, it's pretty good, uh, we think. Uh, we're looking to get that number up, but it's not bad. Uh, so some discussion stats. We've got 23,000 created right now. 82% uh, have a response, response which uh, is good. People are engaged. That's what you want to see. Only 16 have an answer, but that's, it's low, but that's only because uh, the, the person that creates the discussion has to mark it as answered. So we're actually looking at ways, uh, we're, we're designing right now ways to like or upvote responses to uh, discussions so that uh, you can sort them by, by that. It's more helpful that way. Uh, feature requests. Uh, Aaron asked yesterday how many we have. Uh, we have over 6,000 right now. Uh, only 50% have a status change, uh, but I know that the product management team does look at every one that comes through. Uh, and we are looking at ways to uh, add more statuses so that we can better uh, explain the state that it's in and the likelihood of it, it getting implemented. And Jamf Nation uh, is a Java web app. It's the same as the JSS. Uh, funny story, it was built right on top of the JSS 8 series. It used all the controller logic in that. Thankfully, that's all gone now. We're a full Spring app, which is another Java framework. Uh, we use MySQL as our, our backend data source. We use Elasticsearch for search. Uh, Redis is our uh, caching layer. Uh, DynamoDB we use for session storage. Rackspace for um, uploading images and GIFs that everybody puts in the discussion. Uh, and we're on AWS. So uh, the benefit of being on AWS is that uh, we're clustered. So pretty fault tolerant. Um, a couple years ago, we weren't clustered. So whenever we had to do an upgrade, we had to take Jamf Nation down. So it was a Saturday morning upgrade, and that's not fun to do hungover. So, um, <laughs> so now we can take it down during the middle of the week, and no one ever knows. So we can just take down one server at a time. Our code base is made up of 65,000 lines. Uh, that's stripping on all the white space. Um, uh, we've got 
over probably over 11,000 commits now. This was about a couple weeks ago. And uh, our git swear stat is only nine. So we only have nine swear words in our, our commits. So it's pretty good, I think. Uh, looking ahead, this is uh, uh, new features. Uh, I'm not supposed to call it new features because that's what my product owner said. Uh, but I'll call it features we're going to be working on that are, are new. So, uh, <laughs> so we've, uh, we're looking at revamping the user group area. Uh, right now, it's, it's not great. It's just kind of a list of events that happen. We, we want to make it so that it, it's a little more static. You can look at a map and see where all these user groups are. You can join them. You can see information, who members are, um, and, and get uh, notifications of upcoming events. That, that's a big, a big thing. So um, if you have any comments on that, let me know. The next portion is uh, third-party product and third-party product files. We haven't touched this area in a number of years. Uh, and we don't know what we want to do with it. Uh, so this is really where we're looking for a lot of suggestions. So come find me after this and, and talk to me about this. Um, we've got, some people said, patch management integration, uh, better notifications, more visibility for scripts, because that's mostly what's used, uh, and a, a GitHub integration. So we're looking at all these things, but we, we want to talk to you about them first before we go, go ahead and implement something. That's all I got. And here's a picture of my cat and dog. <laughs>